Diffuse reflectance uses a powder sample that we've placed here into this accessory as we saw earlier. So I have here my sampling device, my sampling shuttle, which has in the front of it the potassium bromide, in the back of it the potassium bromide with a small amount of my sample in it. The accessory has been inserted into the thermoscientific Nikola AIS-50 FTIR. Uh, it's a smart accessory for diffuse reflectance. Sitting in it right now, there's a gold mirror for reference so that I had something to line the instrument up on. What I'm gonna do now is insert my sample via this shuttle in until it reaches the first detent. And that's where I'm going to collect my background. Now let's move over to the computer. You see here, I've got it set up with the MCT detector. I simply do that because for the sake of the demo, it's faster, not because I need the MCT for this particular kind of experiment. And I've got it set up to collect 16 scans. It's gonna be a very quick experiment at four wave number resolution. So let's start by collecting our background. So this is our background. It's in preview mode. So you see it's collecting one scan. In order to start it, we'll tell it to go ahead and collect. So now it's collecting the data. As soon as it's done collecting, I will push the shuttle all the way in, which will place the sample into the IR beam. So the IR beam is now directed down onto our sample in the potassium bromide powder. I don't need to save the background, it's stored, so now we'll run the sample, and you can see the spectrum. One of the things I'm going to look for in the spectra is to see whether or not the total absorbance is below about 1.2 or 1.3. If it's much more than that, you have too much sample present. There's a tendency to think that a little bit of sample gives you a good signal, more would be better. That's not true in drifts because you will immediately go to a totally absorbing state. So there's my spectrum of my material. Let's do a quick search, see if we can identify what the material is. And very quickly it pops up with sucrose as the top hit. So this is sugar, which is, as you saw earlier, is how we made the sample. We ground it up together. So for diffuse reflectance, important thing to remember, don't overload the sample. And make sure the top is nicely smoothed off and that the sample is ground well. In that case, you get good signals. You see, we got very good signals here. So that is the diffuse reflectance experiment.